last time we derived the classical wave equation up until here. Um, we converted a partial differential equation to an ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. So I'll remind you that the constant coefficients were this guy and this guy, right? They're constant and they're coefficients of x of x and t of t. Before moving on, um, let's remember something or let's I'll bring up an important point and that's whenever you have differential equations in the same form, like here, they're both constant coefficients, they both have constant coefficients, and they're both ordinary differential equations, and they're both equal to zero, so they're in the same form. Whenever you have differential equations in the same form, then their solutions are also similar. So x of x and t of t better have similar solutions if this equation is mathematically valid. Um, and, and that's just, it follows along from ordinary algebra, right? If you have x plus 2p is equal to 5 and y plus 2q is equal to 6, if I solve them for x and y, I get answers that are in the same form, right? Both of these numbers are just being subtracted from each other. So the important thing is when you have two equations in the same form, their answers are also in the same form. So before I can solve equation 1 and 2, I need to know the value of k. I just have way too many unknowns, right? So first I gotta see what the value of k is, and then I can go ahead solving x of x and t of t. So let's imagine that k can have three possible values, and we'll go on about this with the process of elimination, we'll, we'll try out one, then we'll try out the other, and then the third, and we'll see which one gives us a useful answer. So the first case is the most easiest case, and that's k is just equal to zero. The second case is that maybe k is some positive number, and the third case is maybe k is some negative number. Okay, but if I want to put those in the language of math, right? If How do I represent a positive number in the language of math? Well, you can just say that k is equal to beta squared. It's any number multiplied by itself, right? Because that would always give you a positive answer. So any a, a negative number, or I mean, sorry, any positive number can be written as a square term because any negative number multiplied by itself is a positive number. Any positive number multiplied by itself is also a positive number. So in the language of math, this is how you represent positive numbers. How do I represent negative numbers in the language of math? Well, I know what a positive number is in the language of math. It's just beta squared, alpha squared, gamma squared, a squared, any number squared. If I want to make that into a negative number, I simply multiply the result with negative 1. So now let's go um, and look at the easiest case that k is equal to 0. If k is equal to 0, I go ahead and I put 0 over here and 0 over here. So if I do that, well, this guy is going to become 0. And similarly, this guy is going to become 0 because any number multiplied by 0 is just 0. So that leaves me with a very simple equation, right? It leaves me with this second order differential equation and this second order differential equation. Now, if I want to solve these second-order differential equations, I have to integrate. And that would give me answers in terms of x of x and t of t. I don't want answers in terms of dx of x over d, um, dx of x over dx and dx, t of t over dt. I just want answers in terms of x of x and t of t. So somehow I got to get rid of the d's. And how do I do that? Well, you integrate this. Um, and the question is, how many times do you integrate this? You have to integrate it twice, right? Because there's two differential terms and they're to the order of two. Now, this should be covered in an introductory calculus course um, or an introductory multivariable calculus course. So I'm, I'm assuming that most of you know how to do these easy calculus questions. But if you don't, just leave a comment um, and I'll go over, inter, um, I'll go over integration uh, in a separate math video. So if I integrate this once, remember, if I integrate one side, I also have to integrate the other. So if I integrate this just once, then on the left side, instead of having a second order differential, now I just have a first order differential. The integration of 0 always gives you some constant a1. Well, 
the integration of zero, it doesn't give you any x term, but it leaves you with a constant, and I'll call that constant a1 for x, and I'll call that constant a2 for t. But that still doesn't give me my answer. That's still, I still have those d's, so I gotta integrate it one more time to get rid of the d's, okay? If I integrate it one more time, then on the left side, I'm left with x of x and t of t. That's something that I want. Okay, the integration of a1, you can imagine that there's an x to the exponent 0 over there because anything to the exponent 0 is just 1. So if I integrate that, there's going to be a plus 1 over here and there's going to be a 1 over on the bottom um, and then you introduce an integration constant b1. So that's how I'm left with a1x plus b1 and on the other side I'm left with a2t plus b2. I put the subscripts as 1 and 2 to differentiate that one is for x and the other is for t. So now I have an answer in terms of x and t. Again, remember, in the start I said that because these differential equations are in the same form, their answers are also in the same form. And you can see here, yeah, the answers are in the same form. So the question is, is this our answer? Are we done? Well, not quite yet because I don't know the value of a and b right? Um, I just have way too many unknowns. So first I have to do something about this a and b. In order to find the values of a and b, I have to go back into my system and I have to look at the boundary conditions, okay? So remember, the boundary conditions simply said that when x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l, that means we're at the two extreme ends of the system, the value of u will be equal to 0. So that means at this point, ux of t, which I wrote as x of x times t of t, it's equal to 0. And here, that same value of u is also equal to 0 at this point. So when x is equal to l and when x is equal to 0, the whole u term is equal to 0. So I did that mathematically. I just wrote that here, um, that these are our boundary conditions, right? At 0 and at l, u is equal to 0. Okay. So that means that the x component at these parts is also equal to 0, right? There is, There might be some time the time still going on time isn't equal to zero at the two ends right time is time might be equal to zero on the first end but along the other side it's not equal to zero so that leaves us with the fact that x of x and is zero at the two extremes so i can go ahead and i can use this information and put it into here and solve for a1 and b1 so when x is equal to zero then this whole thing is also equal to zero. When x is equal to l, then of course this whole thing is also equal to zero. So look at the first equation, right? When x is equal to zero, this thing becomes zero. That means b1 is equal to zero. Now I know what b1 is. So now instead of putting x, let's put l, right? If, if I'm looking for a1. So if I put l here, then I know that b1 is zero because I just found that out. That means that a1 is also equal to 0 because l isn't equal to 0. l is some number. l is probably like 5 meters, 10 meters. How far away are you from 0? So l can't be 0. That means a is equal to 0. This is telling us that a and b are both 0. So if I go back into my parent equation, that means a1 is 0, b1 is 0. Um, and that just goes on to show that for any value of x, the value for any value of small x, x of x is equal to zero. And if I put that back into u x of t, that means for any value of x, u is also equal to zero. But that doesn't make sense. Mathematically, it makes sense. But physically, it doesn't make sense. Physically, we know that in between the boundaries, u has some height. So this type of solution um, we call it a trivial solution. The word trivial means insignificant. Um, so it's mathematically correct, but physically it's not correct. So this is kind of the tricky part about differential equations that you sometimes have to solve them in a trial and error way. But usually the math guides you properly, okay? So the, 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 the first thing is that 
k is equal to 0 is not an acceptable solution. It's mathematically okay, but physically it's not okay. That means case 1 is out of the question. Okay, so the take home message is this that just because the solution is mathematically valid, it doesn't mean that it's also physically valid. Okay, so that's something you have to logic out yourself. So before we move on um, into the second case, I just want to, I just want to um, bring into light a mathematical fact that we'll use quite often throughout this course. So please pay attention to this and try to memorize this. And the fact is this, if I have any general differential equation in the form of this, so if I have a second order differential equation, right, and then um, I have constant coefficients, right, if I have a second order differential equation, and I have constant coefficients, and um, the other side is equal to zero, so if I have an equation in this form, the solution of a and a will always be in this form, e to the exponent alpha a. Okay, had this been an x, then you would have had an x here. If this was a y, you would have had a y here and so forth. The important thing to know is whenever you have a differential equation with constant coefficients and it's equal to zero, the answer, the solution to this differential equation will always be in the form e to the exponent alpha a and alpha must be determined mathematically, um, but that's really not the hard part. Alpha is pretty easy to determine. So again, the key take-home message is that if you have constant coefficients and the answer is equal to zero, or I mean the equation is equal to zero, the solution to that differential equation is always in the form e to the exponent alpha a, where alpha must be determined mathematically. Now moving on, let's, let's try to understand this from an example point of view. So say we have a differential equation in this form. I have d squared second order differential equation with respect to y. Um, then I have a first order differential with respect to y. And then I just have 2y. And this is all equal to 0. So first ask yourself, does this have constant coefficients? Well, the coefficient over here is 1, and that's a constant. The coefficient over here is 3, that's a constant. The coefficient over here is 2, and that is also a constant. So yeah, it's constant coefficients. The second question, is this equal to zero? Yeah, it is equal to zero. So that means the solution for this is in the form y is equal to e alpha x. So I know that that's what the solution is.